Hi guys, Marcel here to show you the new active feature of Lucid Objects and how to use it to control the recorded data inside your simulations and make it persist even during subsequent simulations. The easiest way to explain this is just to go ahead and show what I mean. So I'm going to create a very simple scene as always. I'm going to create a plane and just a basic sphere falling onto this plane. <laughs> so this is not about the simulation complexity but rather how to manage the results of your simulation. So I'm going to set the plane as a static collision object and add a very basic inflated preset onto my sphere. So if I press record right now and I simulate my sphere, we get a very nice simulation and the sphere falls onto the plane. Now if I go into my Lucid modifier here, I can see that there is a new state drop down that has one option and that is an active option. So previously if I press record or simulate right now, it would always reset my pre-recorded simulation and I would only have an option to re-record it anew all the time. So now this new active option allows you to turn off this modifier and if I start simulating again, you can see that the recording for the sphere has not been touched and in fact if I go and record the scene again, this has not had any effect on my sphere at all. If you go to the Lucid modifier again and you scroll down, you can also see that there is a couple of new options inside the recording settings. and the first option is start time. This allows you to offset the recorded animation. So right now we started at zero and as we play this back it goes from zero all the way through our recording. However, if I wanted for example to start at a later frame such as frame 20, I can now go and change the start time parameter and change it to frame 20. And as I do this you can see that the sphere is updating in the viewport. So at this point nothing will happen before frame 20 and it will now start at frame 20. So this is something pretty useful if you want to have an offset simulation and in fact it's going to be even more interesting with the next feature. So something else I can do now is create another Lucid modifier inside of the same object. So let me just go and create the second Lucid modifier here while the first one which I just had still keeps its recording and it's no longer active. So if I now go ahead and change something about my sphere, for example, if I change its preset to cloth, I can also go down and maybe change some properties of my sphere, like make it a little bit bigger. Let me turn off our other modifier for now. So I'll just make a bigger sphere and I don't know, you can add some modifiers here to maybe select a few vertices for the sphere to have the cloth fixed or anything else that you desire. So now if I record this again, this is now going to be recorded as a cloth object. And if I play this back, we are playing back the recording which we just made. So let me just also deactivate this modifier now so that the recording will not be reset and go to my previous modifier and turn this one off. So when I do that, you can see that our previous recording for the sphere, which was acting as an inflated object, is still there. And now what we can do is we can take this new simulation and go down to our recording settings we can offset the time a little bit to something like 20 like we did before and the simulation will now start at frame 20. So for example if I wanted to combine both simulation results from my previous modifier and from this modifier I can use this option called out of range output and if I turn this off if the current time is out of range of the simulation for this specific modifier it's going to adapt wherever is coming as input to this modifier so in this case it's going to be the other lucid simulation. So now we have our inflated sphere falling down until frame 20 and at frame 20 the new simulation takes over and if you want you can go and adjust these values interactively so maybe we can set it to like frame 30 or something and now we have this falling down and then the other simulation happens. <coughs> so this allows you to create a nice stack of objects and create a whole bunch of different simulations. You can even save them out to files like LRD or PRT files and later on you can load these files up and set up your start time and combine the simulations on the same object in a very controlled manner. Of course you need to have the active option off because as, to, as soon as I turn this on and I hit simulate the simulation will be overwritten for this modifier. The second useful application of this active state option comes with particle flow simulations and to show this I'm going to create a second scene and in this case I'm just going to create a quick particle system maybe spray some particles into a volume like we always do so I'll create a particle flow view and inside this view I will add a lucid fluid operator to make our particles be driven by lucid 
and I will also add global flex settings to just give the particles a little size, maybe something like two. I will create some volume into which the particles can flow, so just they're not flying out all over the place. This doesn't have to be complicated. Let's in fact just create a plane for demonstration purposes and uh, set a little bit more visible color. Black is usually good. So at this point, if I start simulating, we don't have anything. And if I turn on the simulation and Lucid, we start getting particles emitted from our particle flow object. Of course, I need to go back and assign a static collision object to my plane, just so the particles are now colliding with it. And this creates a little bit of conveyor belt effect where the particles are sliding on the plane. Just going to go into display option and change it from ticks to geometry to make it more visible and you can see that these are our particles now. So I'm going to go and simulate the whole time range of these particles. And once it's done, this is business as usual. We have our particles falling onto our plane. But what we can do now is select this lucid fluid operator and again, turn off the active state, which will prevent it from being re-recorded if we record this again. And now I'm going to take the whole event. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it again. All of the operators inside this event have been copied. So these are not instances and I'm just going to wire this into our PF source. So we have two events and this lucid fluid number two, I'm going to turn active just so we can record it. The positions of the created particles right now are going to be identical and this is not something we want. What I want to do is again simulate it, but this time have the particles appear in different places. So I'm just going to go into my position icon operator and change the seed to a different value. I'm also going to change the display color to something else so we can separate the particles visually inside the viewport. Maybe I'll change it to a red color that's usually pretty defined. So now if I go and record my simulation, the previous simulation is still going to be there, but now we have also recorded this new red particles and they are now acting side by side. Of course, they're not interacting with each other because I have turned off my other lucid fluid. So that is just playing back the recording from before and it's not part of the simulation. But what this allows you to do is create a different number of particle flow events and have each one generate particles as a separate simulation. And what this can do is allow you to overcome, for example, Lucid's built-in particle limit, which currently comes at around 1.3 million particles. So you could theoretically simulate tens and hundreds of millions of particles and have them recorded as part of the scene or external LRD objects and have them play back side by side inside the same scene. So these are just a couple of interesting applications of the new active functionality present for all Lucid objects and another way you can use Lucid to empower your simulations. Thank you very much for watching.